Jerry now turns his attention to his father's side of the family to try and discover what happened to his paternal grandmother, Selma Springer. Selma helped set up the Springer Shoe Store in Landsberg with her husband, Nathan. But following his death in 1930, she went to live with her brother, Hermann, a famous doctor in Berlin. The last time Jerry's father saw his mother was in 1939, just before he escaped to Britain. Jerry knows she died in the Holocaust, but he doesn't know where or when. To find an answer, he's come back to Germany to the Potsdam archive, which holds extensive Jewish deportation records. He's meeting Dr. Monica Nakath and historian Dr. Roland Peach. We've had a look for your uh, grandmother, Selma Springer. Yes. And we found a file on her, which was inside the file for a Hermann Elkelis. Does that name say anything to you, Hermann Elkelis? He was the brother of Selma. Indeed, he was, and they lived together in his flat at the end. Yes. So that's where their file uh, located together. Mm -hmm. um, we're first going to have a look at the smaller file, at Selma's file. Um, like everything, um, these files are done by the Geheime Staatspolizei, by the Gestapo, and it's basically a, file, a, a form they had to fill in. These are all her possessions, which you'll find nice. translated there as well, which become the property of the Reich. Look at this. This is what she had. Two dresses, two undergarments. One shirt, one corset, three pairs of stockings, one pair of galoshes. So they put these things down so that they could then be sold? Exactly. They were all part of their possessions from the bank account to the last uh, and they, shirt. And they thought they'd get some money for this? Exactly. And that's, in case of Herman, it's even documented here. Got his bank account here with the Deutsche Bank. 335 price mark. Obviously that will all be confiscated. Mm. A gas bill here. He's paid up front for a gas, so it's a deposit that is due to him, which the state then takes over. The electricity asking for their contributions. And then here, national insurance subscriptions to be paid, and that is money out. And um, it is a bit, tells us a little bit more if you look at it. Beschafft Sachen etwa das Vermögen Theresienstadt. Yeah, that's the first time actually that someone that ach demands some money doesn't say he's been evacuated, but that is actually saying he has been brought to Theresienstadt. Have you ever heard of Theresienstadt? Mm -mm. Theresienstadt is, um, is a Jewish ghetto outside Prague, and it's quite famous. It was meant to be a, a nice, comfortable ghetto for older Jews, for richer Jews, for artistic Jews. It was sort of advertised oh, like a giant Jesus. retirement home. Right. We've got a photo here. So mm. you might have seen other transport photos. Um, this is a lot more civil. It, it looks, looks more civil. It looks I mean, a lot more civil. civil. But it looks like people just saying goodbye on a train, not packed in. And exactly. It looks a lot more comfortable. It doesn't look like a uh, usual image you have uh, of a deportation train. At least from the outside, it looked all like Theresienstadt would be something different. All right. Well, I'd like what I'd like to do now is um, to go to Theresienstadt or whatever is left of it in Czechoslovakia and, um, and see what it was like there. Along the street, somebody would spit at me. Because you were Jewish? Yes. 